A big thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. So in this video, I wanna go through the lenses that I've used over the last year and how that's changed so significantly from the previous years. Time goes by. Morning everybody, fantastic to see you all again. So in this video, I wanna go through my lenses. Um, there's been a really big change in the type of lenses that I'm using, and I feel like it warrants a video because I feel like there's some really interesting things that I've found out and some things that have really helped my photography. So I wanna share those with you. Um, and it's all also gonna be interesting to look at some of the photos in Lightroom as well and just um, explain to you some of the changes that I've made. I don't know if you know this, but in Lightroom, you can go into the library and you can click Find, and then you can go and you can do a search. And you can search for all sorts of metadata, basically. So I'm searching metadata here, and I can search for the cameras that I've used, the lenses that I've used, the focal lengths, shutter speeds, anything. I use this all the time. It's really useful for when you're trying to find a, um, some slow shutter speeds or something like that and some photos. I've selected all the ones that are filtered with a flag. So I flag the photos that I pick through the year. And you can see that in 2021, I've got all the photos in 2021 selected. I took a thousand picked photos of 27, 23,000 photos that I took ridiculous number of photos, and we can go through those. So we'll do that, jump straight into it, and we can see here, there's some drone shots there at the top, but we can see here, we've got the 14 to 24 and the 14 to 30, and by far, I shot more with the 14 to 24 than the 14 to 30, which is this this one here. And that's because this is, this was a new lens in 2021, and it is amazing quality. It really is amazing quality. And I used to use the 14 to 30, which you can see is a lot smaller, um, a lot lighter, and a lot cheaper, it's half the price. So there's lots of advantages to this, but this, if you're looking at just sharpness, this is definitely sharper. However, I'm gonna get onto why this isn't as bad as you think um, in terms of sharpness. In fact, it's pretty amazing. So we'll get onto that when I get to 2022. Then going through the lenses to the longer range up here, we can see that I shoot the 24 to 70 lenses, the f2.8 and the f4, and again, the f2.8 is the one that I shoot most. And that I really like this 24 to 70 f4. It's super, super good lens, super sharp. Um, but this lens is probably the best lens that I've ever owned. It's so, so sharp from 24 to 70. You, you know, and, and shooting down to even f13, it's pretty good, I'd say. So far, I've got the, the, the two sort of standard lenses that you'd expect, the 14 to 24, the 24 to 70. And then going up, then we've got the 24 to 200, which is this one here. I shot 100 shots with that. This is a great lens if you're going on a long walk. It goes a huge amount of versatility and it's light. So that lens and that lens, which weigh about two and a half kilos into this thing, which is about 700 grams. Um, so, it's good, but it's not super sharp. Um, it's just a little bit soft. Most of the time it's fine, but I don't really think it's great at the 200 millimeter end, and it's not great at the 24 millimeter end. In the middle, it's it's pretty good. And then we get to the 7200. This lens is incredible. Uh, all the, the Z lenses are, are from Nikon are amazing, but this one is particularly amazing. And you can see I got 211 picks from that. But what's really interesting is when you go into some of the details on this. So if I go to the 24 to 70 and say I say, okay, well, what have I shot at the long end of that? You can see that at the long end, 65 of them, quite a big proportion of them, are right at the long end. In fact, the, both at both ends, either 24 millimeters or 70 millimeters, which is, makes you think that you go to one end, you think that's as wide as I can go, or that's as long as I can go, and you use that focal length rather than changing lenses. So there's an inbuilt thing within us that says, I would rather just compromise the composition than have to change lenses. And that's why sometimes something like the 24 to 200 is good, but I never liked using this if I had the opportunity to have the lenses in my bag because the quality is just not as good. But those 70 millimeter shots, if we, if we just went in and had a look at them, like for instance, this one here. So ideally, if I was taking this shot, I would probably have 
gone in and shot it maybe there which is probably around about 100 millimeters, something like that, and not at 70 millimeters. So if we go into this shot here, and I just go to the develop module and crop it, you can see that I've already cropped in a little bit. So this is 70 millimeters, and I already thought it would have been good if I could have just been a bit tighter. And you find that quite a lot. If you go through these photos at 70 millimeters, then you think, actually, you might have once used 80 or 90. And that, when I get to 2022, you'll see why I made a big change in, in these lenses. If we go back to the library um, and we look at, if we just go to here, and we look at the 14 to 24 lens, um, I mean, just look at some of the better ones. Like, this lens is unbelievable. This was one of my best shots from 2021, taken with this incredible 14 to 24 millimeter lens. And when you look into it, when you actually zoom in on it, the quality is so incredible. That's mass there stood on the end, but the quality right to the edges is really amazing. And that's where you notice the difference right at the edges, that you don't lose any quality. So if I go down to this grass here, Right at the corner here, it's not that soft. Whereas this lens, this corner here, would be a little bit soft. Not a huge amount, but a little bit. Most of the time though, you know, if you look at what's in the corners, it just doesn't matter that. Um, and the middle of it is, is almost as sharp. We, what we know is this 14 to 24 is pretty sharp. The, the 24 to 70 is sharp. This is not the best lens in the world, but it's versatile and the 70 to 200 sharp. So how do I change that going into 2022? Well, it's really interesting. So if we go into my wide angle shots here, you can see that the 14 to 24 f2.8, I've done 54 and the 14 to 30 f4, I've done 60. So I've shot about the same with, with both of these. And the reason behind that, and the reason I started shooting more with this, um, and if we look at some of the shots I did shoot with this, like this one, I was shooting with this with this one because I wanted to control the shutter speed. And so being able to put a filter on it really easily is so, so good. Whereas this, you've got to have like a, um, a lens hood and then you've got to put the filters on the lens hood. They're a lot bigger, but this one's so good. These case filters just fit on so easily. So it's, it's, and it's also lighter and because in 2022, I didn't want to carry as much weight, then being able to carry that lighter lens was good. But you can see that this, is pretty sharp in the middle. It's only when you go right to the edges that you can start to see here that it starts to drop off some of the quality and go a little bit softer. And I got some of my best shots with that 14 to 30 lens. So this one, which I absolutely love. Again, it's super sharp. And what I really like about it is how it deals with these highlights around the branches. There's not any really bad fringing. Um, I think it works really well. This shot of the rainbow in Cornwall was shot with that as well. And again, it's just super good quality. So I was really pleased with that and a little bit surprised. So what's really interesting, if we go to the 24 to 70, we can see that only 74 plus 100, 174 of my shots are shot with these two lenses, the 24 to 70 lenses. The majority of my shots was shot with this lens, this 24 to 120, which is a new S-line lens that I got in 2022, and I absolutely love it. The quality is not far off the 24 to 70. It's not quite as good, but you would be hard pushed to tell the difference if I showed two images. And I took some of my favorite images with that. So if we look at some of the four star images with that, I've just selected a few here. I took in Antarctica, I used it because I had this on my Z7 and I had the 100 to 400 on my Z9. So, you know, the penguins are just perfectly sharp there. My best shot probably in 2022, this penguin ice boat was shot with this lens. And again, it's just so, so sharp right to the edges. I did a lot of woodland with it because it's so good for woodland. That extra reach between 70 um, and 200, 120 is just so good. And just look at how sharp the trees are in here. Right to the edges, you go right to the edge, right there you can see how sharp it is. This lens transformed how I um, shoot, I think, because having that extra reach when you get to 70 millimeters just to go a little bit further gives you more compositional control and it makes such a big difference to your photography. I took, you can see all these pictures that were some of my favorites. This, again, one of my favorite shots were taken with this because 
I just leave it on my, on my camera most of the time. So if we go down now, you can see that the 24 to 200, I, I did shoot a reasonable amount on it, but not a, not a massive amount. What you'll find is that I shot with this when I was climbing big, big hills. So that was at the beginning of the year and then right at the end of the year um, after my operations because I just wanted something light. But to be honest, I'd rather take this than, than this. And this is where the next lens comes in. Um, on this, and this is probably the biggest change in my photography in 2022, was the addition, and you can see how many shots I took with it, 373 picks um, of this 100 to 400, which was a lens that came out from Nikon, and I got it for Antarctica to shoot wildlife. But little did I know just how much I would use this, and you saw videos that I made on this lens, I'll link one of them there. Um, of how beneficial it is for my landscape photography. And we can look at that, we can see what shots I took over 200 millimeters. And if you look at it, um, and I select my 200 millimeters and above shots, then there are a number of images that I took that are just amazing. So I've got a lot in Antarctica, being able to shoot um, Shots like this were just so good. This was shot at 400 millimeters. It makes such a big difference to be able to zoom in that extra amount when you're shooting vistas from a long way away. I could shoot other things like this whale tail here. Um, I did a, quite a lot of wildlife, but when I got back, and this is where I didn't expect it from Antarctica, I shot a lot of other shots um, that were really good. So if I just go into the pics, so things like this, when I was on top of a mountain shooting down into the mist, which made a really big difference. Shots like this, where you can just pick out details in the landscape. This was shot at 400 millimeters. This one again was shot at 400 millimeters. You know, being able to have that detail, picking out those small things in a landscape, just makes such a big difference to your photography. If you'd have asked me, do you need that extra focal length? Uh, even a year ago, I would have said probably not. You know, I was happy with my 70 to 200. But if you look at how few shots I shot with that, my 70 to 200, only 12 picks with this 70 to 200, which is, which is crazy. Because basically, these weigh the same. So, and the quality is pretty similar. So why would I put the 70 to 200 in my bag? I might as well put this in. I've got up to 100 with the now 24 to 120. So these two lenses just do so much and are so much more versatile than the 24 to 70 and the 70 to 200. And that's like, just really revolutionized my photography because it means that I've got more reach when I've got one lens on my camera because I've got that 24 to 120, which means that I'm better at finding compositions that are correct rather than having to change a lens, which have to be honest, we don't do enough. And then I've got the extra reach with the 100 to 400. And that was really interesting to me. It's been a complete sea change in my lenses. I don't know what I'm gonna do with my 24 to 70. I mean, there still will be a, 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 an opportunity for this when you want to use f2.8, that's really important um, for both these lenses, but I don't need to do that so much as a landscape photographer. But it's pretty pretty amazing, really. Um, and you can see here from these um, pie charts that there's been a big change, you know, the, 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 the lenses that I use and take out in my bag have changed. I still 50-50 with these two wide angle lenses because I love the quality of the 14 to 24 over the 14 to 30, but I'm not unhappy when I'm taking this and it means that I've got this versatility of these really simple filters and you can even put a lens hood on this as well. So I hope you've enjoyed that. If you have, give it a thumbs up um, because that massively helps the YouTube algorithm, helps my channel and um, yeah, it'd be, it'd be really good to start off this year and um, maybe push to 500,000 subscribers. I just can't even believe I'm saying that. Um, I also wanna say how thankful I am to everybody that watches this channel. It really is amazing that I've been going for over five years now and everyone's stuck with me. Uh, I still can't believe it, I have to pinch myself. So before I go, I just want to talk to you about my website. I have added a gallery section to my website and I've actually given my website a completely new look and feel. Um, it's, not, it's not completely different, but I've, I've redone um, it. I did that over Christmas using Squarespace. Um, so go and take a look at the galleries. 
And Squarespace have sponsored this week's video. As you know, I've been using Squarespace for years now. They've been a fantastic supporter of this channel. And it's just so easy to use to be able to set up galleries like this where you can just add your images and it sorts out all the layout. It makes sure that they look fantastic on the mobile as well. And I feel like as photographers, we wanna share our photos as much as possible. And by having your own website, you're in control of the quality of the images, how you show those images, what you talk about on those images. And if you wanna go a little bit step further and have a store, then Squarespace is a fantastic platform to do that. You can build your own store and start selling your own prints, which is one of the best things, the best feelings in the world when you get that first order. Anyway, there's a link in the description below. Um, you can get 10% off if you use the offer code Nigel or go to squarespace.com forward slash Nigel. Go and take a look. Go and take a look at my new um, website. Let me know what you think about it as well. Send me a message. I'd love to hear what you think about the website um, and go and check out the gallery section. It's a section I've never had on my website before. So I'm sharing loads of photos from all over the world. Thanks ever so much for watching. <laughs> Until next Sunday. Bye.